Hello, recorders. I'm reporting to you live from LA Comic Con 2021. It's been amazing coming back to this show, and it's recording time! I'm having a good time. How was that John Leguizamo and Peter Marietta panel? Wasn't that amazing? It's all about representation matter, and everybody here is representing. So this next panel, yes, yes, what's going on? All right, fam, let's do this. Next panel, we got some legendary folks here. We got David Cho of the Cho Show. David Cho, come on out here. Book artist Jacques. Come on up here, Jacques. Give it up for Jacques. And last but certainly not least, speaking of legendary, we got famed comic book artist, writer, director, creator of the Dark Knight Returns, Batman. Please give a warm welcome to Frank Miller. What's up, Frank? How's it going? Hi. Oh, going okay. What about you? I'm, I'm not doing so bad. I just got back into town. Um, someone told me. I, I literally, just for the audience, I worship this guy. He's a god to me. And they told me yesterday that I'm going to interview him. And I just met him. Thanks. And I just met him two seconds backstage. And this is, and now I'm in front of you guys. So just, just to set it up. Let's. <laughs> I don't trust either of these men. <laughs> Frank, I just want to ask you, um, your parents, what did they think about you being a comic book artist? <laughs> I announced to, I, I announced to you know, my parents when I was five years old that, that uh, I came in with a, a comic book that I'd drawn on typing paper and folded over and Table right. together, and I, I, I showed it to her, and I said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And uh, and my mother just, without batting an eye, said, well, you can do anything you you could dream of, you just set your mind to it. So she was very supportive. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and you know, when, when uh, I was in high school, I got more serious about it, she got a little nervous. Because she realized I really meant it. Right. And uh, the way she tells it, one time she, you know, my, she was a night nurse. And so and, and my, my father was a, was a real morning guy um, and, and who, who worked in, uh, on building construction, and, you know, designing you know, kitchens and that sort of thing. And, and so they, they met almost like, uh, you know, like, like Arthurian lovers in that, in that, in that she would come, come back in the morning from being a nurse and, and he would just be getting ready to, to, to uh, you know, to go out to work. Would they have a little moment? Right? Yeah. And meanwhile, they banged out seven kids. And, 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 uh, and, and what well, kind of, they, they... Wait, where are you? Are you in the middle? I'm, I'm number five, but but the, but the, but the, well, you got to said that generation um, had 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 you know they 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 won World War Two, and and when they when they got back home, they they really uh, they they figured they'd save the world. It was really time to repopulate, I guess, because yeah. they they they, you know, they gave us the, the the baby boomers like my older siblings and the cuspers like me and so on. Anyway, they had these sessions where they discussed things they away from, it was the only time they had free of the kids. 
was these early morning conversations. Mm. And they, and they, uh, like I said, like Lady Hawk, you know, and, and, uh, and they, they, uh, one time, uh, my mother brought up, brought me up to, to my father saying, you know, Frank saying he's going to move to New York City, and I figured out just how to stop him. So, so, and, and. So, so your dad wasn't so keen? It's because I, it, it, it's no, it was a, my mother who wasn't so keen. And my father just said, my, my boy's moving to New York and I'm, I'm driving him there. Oh, wow. Okay. Because he was a New Yorker. And he was an ambitious man. I just wanted to know if they were supportive or not, just because... Oh, they were. That's so So when you started bringing home Batman money, the, the, the Daredevil money, you, you shared this with your parents, you bought them a nice house, you uh, well, I spoiled... Well, I didn't have a chance to take care of my father. Your father had already he, passed. He, yeah, he, he, he was gone, uh, but it, it was he was, uh, but it, but he he got to see things starting to happen. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So so uh, when that moment when you were like five years old was that like? Because I feel like maybe I don't know how everyone else is, but I feel like I had a point where when I realised that this is what I kind of wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, for me. In the UK, it was a comic called 2008 that Judge Dredd came from. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah. And in the 80s, the talent they had working on that was insane. Yeah, and man. I was just the right age for it to kind of like hit. Right. And as soon as I saw that, like, that, that was it. That, that's what I wanted to do. But uh, you're saying at five, you have a comic? And, and that's yeah, at you... five, I was doing imitations of Superboy and Legion of Superheroes. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you did. I, I, yeah, I was, when I was five, I would ask my dad to like, my mom and my dad to buy me toys, and they're like, no, we're not buying, we don't have any money, so draw it on cardboard, cut it out, put it on popsicle sticks, and that's your action figures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my parents are first generation, they came in here during a war, and they're like, they, you know, usually Asian immigrant families, it's like, you gotta be, we came here for a better life, you gotta either be a doctor or a lawyer. And I told them, I'm gonna be a graffiti artist. And my mom was like, that's wonderful, son. Anything, <laughs> anything you wanna do. You wow. want to write? You want to be a vandal? You want to write on walls? And I was like, you, it was either that or comics. So to have that unloving, that, that loving like support of like you can like literally do whatever you want, it was uh, it was very special. But you know, the first time I read Dark Knight when I was a kid, I'm reading it. Maybe not when I was a kid, but I've reread it every couple of years. I, I'm 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 reading it, going, is Bruce Wayne your dad or is he, or is it your mother? And uh, now you're here, so you can answer the question. Well, I'm glad to say Bruce Wayne wasn't my mom. Um, <laughs> you know, I'd be a very, I'd be an even more confused man if that were the case. But, but I, no, they, 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 the Batman was always to be a, a real mythic figure. Right. Um, sort of represented a kind of primordial. But like what what a dad is when you're a real real kid, right? You know because when, because when when you're when you you feel like you're Carrie Kelly's size next like to this yeah right. giant. Um, but but it's it's uh but no I wasn't I wasn't you know either consciously or unconsciously trying to recreate those two. You know where are you real people? Frank, I can't believe this guy. Oh, sorry. Okay. I wasn't trying to recreate uh, my parents in any way um, in, in doing, you know, Batman any more than I was trying to recreate myself in Carrie Kelly. You are quite similar, though. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> it's the haircut. So, Frank, I have, a, I have, like, an insane amount of energy and passion when I was, not that I don't have that now, but in my 20s, to draw certain things for all nighters that I don't know, that I don't have now. I had lunch this week to name drop with Raphael Grandpa and also yeah, yeah. Daniel Warren Johnson yesterday. And it's like, if we put it into comic book terms, like the spawn meter, you only have a certain amount. It's like, you only have this certain amount to do like your best work. And like now if someone asks me to draw anything, it's like the shittiest drawing. It's, it's quick, it's very expressive. And I kind of like it better now than when I was younger and it had tons of detail. and. Everything yeah, was, yeah. you know, so I, I kind of see your art going in that way. I see a lot of Sharpie. I see like, it's, uh, it, 
it's like um, the loosest version of your early work. And I know some people hate it. I, I love it. I, I was wondering if, you, if you're going to push it even more looser and possibly maybe even children's book in the future. Well, yeah, I definitely am planning a children's book in the yeah. future. But, but it's, it's, uh, it's funny that you, you say Star Piece, because it's yeah. like, I'll, I'll use that as a, uh, as a tool to just do the roughs that I trace off from, yeah. but I never, I never used it on, on my boards. I just noticed, you know, at your desk over there where, where I saw your, your pencils under the thing. I didn't know, I thought you'd just go straight. So I say no more tracing for Frank. Oh no, I, I, I plan everything. I'm a total planner. No, I'm saying no more planning. Go straight, straight to finish. Oh, you're telling me. Yeah, I'm telling you. Go straight to finish. <laughs> oh. I want to see it. I, I want to, like, you got it. You've been drawing for a long time. You should just go straight to. I'm not listening. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, 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 I, I, no, because I, 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 I'm very architectural in my, in the way I think about what a page is and what a picture is. And, and I, and I, uh, um, if I'm going to draw a car, for instance, right. I'm going to structure it. Right. Because, because what I like to do is, 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 is to do, to produce a pencil drawing that's very schematic mm -hmm. and doesn't have any blacks indicated on it at all. And then just attack the whole yeah. thing with a brush and go wild. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the bones are there and that I can yeah. play off of them. I, I, I'm, I'm very similar. I, I, yeah. I love making sure that um, like the foundation is right and then you can like go off on top, right. you know, but there's a solidity yeah. to it that I think yeah. sometimes when people throw that style around, it can miss something because the, 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 the underdrawing isn't there or, or at least even the, 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 the vision of what's underneath isn't there and all you see is like the mess. But yeah. what I love about both your guys' work is um, there's, it's not as simple as that. You know, the, right. the, 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 the ink, you know, I think we all love throwing paint and ink around and making textures and spatters and that's to me still like the magic of, of, yeah. of that we get to do this, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's not. That's just, that's just the surface, and that's the, so that's the expression. And, I, and I, it's really interesting here that the, there's uh, there is literally an architectural underpinning which you then just like attack. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I I'll attack also, without the architecture. Yeah. <laughs> also, I've got to say that I that I uh, <coughs> I love the old tools. Yeah. I mean, it's it. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I like to work with a you know with a with a flexible pen, yeah, yeah, you know, and I dip into 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 like you know this old-fashioned ink, that, you know, um, and and uh, but but the real to me the the absolute sexiest tool in the world is a horsehair brush, mm -hmm. and and it is the most flexible, beautiful tool there is. There's and and, and that's why I disdain markers because they're they're dead. They're a piece of felt, right? Um, and and and, uh, and it, 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 it also, I've just got to say, part of it is part of my just might just be being ornery, and that in that I it took so damn long to learn how to use a brush that I'm not going to doubt that it throw it away. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think so. I, I I still feel there's something very special about using traditional craft and yeah. ink and paint and the yeah. way. It can surprise you and move in a way that you could oh, never yeah. really plan. You know, that, I, I think that's well, legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. he never tell, does. It. You can't make it. You can't. Uh, yeah, that's why I love uh, spatter. Is that you can't you can't order it what they yeah, do yeah. really. It's it's gonna it's gonna if your wrist twists a little bit, all of a sudden you've got this strange stringy thing jumping across your drawing. Um, I I want to say something about that because. People mostly know my art for like the graffiti stuff I've done, but I haven't really done that in like decades. And I'm primarily a watercolorist now, and a lot of that is due to the work you did with Lynn Varley. I, sorry, I have zero information about like like how if it was an ugly divorce or anything. Is there no chance you're going to get back together with Lynn Varley? Well, I think I think that, that Lynn's mainly up um, doing doing her own stuff. She these days, I. Your work with her watercolors changed my life. So. It, was a, it was a wonderful collaboration, and, and you know, I mean, I, 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 I know I learned a lot from it. So it's not going to happen again? <laughs> I don't think so. What about romantically? 
I think that's time to hear you have this. All right, thanks. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm probably not the right person to ask this because I have paid no dues. You've already in gone real far, yeah. man. <laughs> I've paid no dues in the comic book business. I did one self-published comic 20 years ago, and then I've done like a variant here and there. But my very, very limited uh, experience working with Marvel and DC yeah. is their fucking pussies. And I, it's just, I'm never going to work with them again. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say never, but I probably will not work with them again. Uh -huh. What do you think about these artists? Well, you might have just made sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about these young artists out here, like, giving their, like, best work to these companies? And then, like, you know, I know you've spoken very passionately about this topic before, but, you know. Well, I think, you know, I've, I've, I've been a several minds across many years about this, and I would say the most important thing bar none, is to do your best work. No matter what. And if you, and if you spend some time doing it for, for, you know, doing it and seeing that you don't want a piece of it or whatever, well then, you know, you've learned a lesson there. But you've put your time in, you've done good work, and you've learned a lot. So I have no regrets. And just move, and move ahead and, and, and make your decisions based on what you've learned. Mm. But I think, I think that an artist has to be an adventurer. You know, here we write all these stories about, about adventurous, bold people. We can't be a bunch of persons out there, you know. And, 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 and an artist has to go out and take chances, and sometimes these chances mean getting taken advantage of. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I've, I've had a very good experience, like, like dealing with DC, I've done more for DC than Marvel, but DC particularly. Um, and to me, that's bought, that's kind of... Joe, I'm sorry, I'm going to backtrack. I love DC and Marvel. Just, all right, <laughs> keep, keep going. Sorry. No, no, but like, it's like, but it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, because you, you, I, I get what you're saying, and you're absolutely right. You know, I think increasingly in the world that we live in, it's giving us more opportunities to do our own thing and get it in front of people where people will consume it or, you know, enjoy it. And, and it's a different situation from when, from when I started. But I will say that... Um, you know, they've also given me, I guess, you know, they've given me eyes on, on my work that I wouldn't, uh, maybe wouldn't that's be able to right, get. get, get right. in, in, uh, you know, maybe I could have, you know, if I'd gone a different path. But, like, the, the analogy that I always use, and this might be a little bit too obscure, but, like, Marvin Gaye had, had to sing The World is a Great Big Onion before he could sing What's Going On. Right. <laughs> And, and like you know that, that like Barry Gordy yeah, didn't want to yeah. do what's going on if he was a new artist he, that that would not be in the world and like there's for me there's always there's always a middle ground and I think that I I, I try and just pull the best from from all of it and and, and it's given me the the, the the position there where you know and like when you did Sin City I mean that was I, I'd argue springboard from from what you had done before yeah. and 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 it gave us like this incredible visionary piece that, that, you know, I mean, I can remember seeing that for the first time and it just was like, you know, oh my God, yeah. and, and this is Frank, right. this is Frank, this is, you know, I love Dark Knight Returns with all my heart, I love your data, but like, when I saw Sensei, I was like, holy shit, you know, this kid, sorry, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, you know, it, it's really interesting because uh, I, I, I do wonder whether that would have happened in the same way without Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. But, but, but then you've, you have literally gone the other way and, and seen great success from it. So it's all good. <laughs> well, here's a, here, another example I've got to point out because she happens to be taking a picture of us right now. But right in the audience there is we have a, Carrie we have Kelly, a beautiful right there. Carrie Kelly standing there. And do you think I wouldn't have wanted to make up Carrie Kelly? I mean, it's a, it's a, by mixing it up with the whole Batman world and everything, I got, I got to, to explore the things of storytelling and character making that, um, that, you know, made me leap far forward from where I was yeah. before and, and, and made me that much more ready to attempt things like Sin City. So, so it's, it's uh, I think anything that gets you there and makes you better. Yeah, I, I guess I came out a little hot by calling out Marvel DC, but I guess what I'm, as I'm hearing you guys talk, what I'm trying to get at is you as a writer are the best. You as an artist are the best. It's very innovative, but when, when I, this is all before I ever met you backstage. You know, it's just like my thoughts of Frank Miller and his legacy and what you leave behind and what you inspire is 
more than the writing, more than the art, is the attitude. Yeah. The yeah. attitude of yeah. just coming in and exploring and like, let's try this and pushing. And my, like I said, my very limited experience of working with the major companies is, I don't know if they would publish Dark Knight today, you know, with the swastika nipples and all that. Like, I don't know if they would, like, I, I, it's just, there's so much pushback, there's so much fear, there's so much like, and it's just, you're, it's fearlessness. You've inspired fearlessness in me, and, and I've been fearless in my career, and then I meet yeah. artists all the time, whether they're comic book artists, graffiti artists, you know, illustrators, fine artists, and it's like, they're just ruled by fear, and then the galleries right, or the right. book publishers, so it's like, I, I, I want for you as not, as just meeting you, and like you being my hero, I want your legacy. It already is for me to be fearlessness. And yeah. Just, just go for it. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. But I, I will say, so I'm currently writing and drawing my own Batman book, and obviously, you know, Frank Shadow loom, looms large when, when when you take on a project like that. But DC, I've I've had to jump through no hoops. Hoops. They let me do whatever I want, essentially. Nice. Yeah, to a degree, you know. But like, um, again, my experience has been pretty good, and and and, and they and they. They let they let you go off, you know, and and you know, um, I feel like I, I I actually feel comics are getting better in that way. I think there's more inclusivity. There's there's a more variation of styles and interest in storytelling, and you know, and 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 the companies, or at least the editors that are working on those books, realize that, and and they're, they're letting it flourish. You know, like DC have this black label thing, which is kind of like a slight sidebar to the mainstream stuff. Right. And, and, and you can take chances, you can do different stuff. And like I, I'd say now, a book like Dark Knight would be a black label book, for example, you know? And so, you know, again, like, um, I'm not sort of defending the, sort of, you know, the, 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 the but, but my experience has been, it's been pretty cool. It's been good, which, is, which has been great, you know? I'm very happy for you, John. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, LA? <laughs> Frank Miller in Los Angeles. What's it like for you being back in LA? I know you did uh, RoboCop 2, and a popular drug in RoboCop 2 was Nuke. Yeah. Remember Nuke? Of course. Uh, I've, I've, yeah, I've got, got some. LA seems. Oh, you got some? So what, uh, are we, are we doing questions or anything with this? Do, like, is there anyone like burning questions? We, can we do that? I, I'm not quite sure what the setup here is. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever we want to do. Does anyone have like a burning Frank, question? Do you want to take questions or? <laughs> wow, this crowd's wild. This guy's super, what's going on? Oh, all right. Anyone else? Do we have a mic, or does everyone have to scream their their? Uh... All right. Let's go with screaming for now. Who's ever the loudest that will you know? Yeah, go. Where was All Star Batman and Robin? Go again. Where was All Star Batman and Robin gonna end? When was All Star Batman and Robin gonna end? Where? Oh, where? Let's go back to uh, no questions. What am I going to do if Jim ever said, calls me up and says, "Hey Frank, let's let's let's, let's move ahead with this thing." I mean, oh, I I can't. We can't do it, Jim. I I was in L.A. and I blew the whole ending to a whole big audience. <clears throat> you know. We never talk about stories before they come out. Come on. Where, where is your passion these days, Frank? Are you are you wanting to do movies, TV shows? Are you still into superhero stuff? You want to work for, you know? Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, just what what's uh, what's what's my I'm just I, I'm looking at I'm looking at all the different possibilities that 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 I I think that that. I've been kind of taking a long view on, <coughs> on on comics and illustrated stories and all of that right. in the past few years, 
and jump back in on some superhero stuff, some traditional superhero stuff, yeah. to get a taste of that. Um, and but also I'm, I'm looking at other things like you know it's like I, I know I know I gotta I know I gotta do a children's book. You I'm have to. You have book. to. I would uh, love to see. Because I'm a Miller big Miller. fan of the, of the classic old illustrated. Does anyone books. here want to see a Frank Miller kids book? Thank you. Yes. See, corner that market, Frank. Corner that market. Um, oh, it's a big market, though. Yeah. I don't think it. I, I don't think one person's going to corner that one. Um, but with hearing what Jock's experience with DC currently is, um, you know, when I deal with people in film, television, this, the limited stuff I've been, done in comics, it just seems my experience. Tons of notes, tons of pushbacks. We love it. They always start with a positive. We love it, but can you dial this back? I'm just wondering, after everything you've done and everything you've accomplished, is there hidden scripts? Is there stuff you wrote in the 80s, 90s, the 2000s that just, you wrote it and they're like, this, we'll never publish this or like, you know, we'll never buy this or make this. I, I got to imagine that there is. That's a great question. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Give it to me. Give me that shit. No. No, they're staying that way. They're staying that way. You know, it's like uh, they were of their time, and and, and uh, hell, you know, some of them are just plain awful. Um, so no, it's it's, it's, it's I, I I I you know I I'm not playing a nostalgia game. I, I I'm interested in going new places with this stuff. Got it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I have I have stuff in the vault that just, I'll you know I'll just wait till I die, and someone yeah. to put it out or just burn it, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, do you have any desire to draw any comics? Yeah. What yeah. do you think I'm doing on stage? I'm at, yeah. You guys can hear me basically. <laughs> yeah. I'm shooting my shot right now. Yeah. You got, you, I'll play the fucking nostalgia game. You got that shit in the in the basement? Give it to me. I'll draw it. Wow. Give it to me, Frank. I'm, I'm asking you in front of Los Angeles right now. <laughs> I have too much respect for you guys. I, I, I have too much respect. I, I, comic book artists are the group. And uh, I just, I have so much fear walking into that space. I would like to, every year I go, this is the year. This is the year I'm yeah, going to yeah. draw a comic. And then I, 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 sh I, I tuck it back. I shrivel up. So, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe if uh, Frank gives me one of those, these horrible scripts that he's he's hiding, maybe I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get my brush horsehair brush pen out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, drawing a comic page is yeah, it is tough. But also, just to speak to what you were saying earlier, like um, I feel like genuinely lucky that that I've that I've been able to just pretty much do what I wanted to do, you know, yeah. and pretty you know like I've. I don't know whether it's luck, whether it's just like, you know, I, I feel like comics support people that have a more sort of individual style, which is a, which is a really nice thing. And, and if, if you find people that, that, that like what you do, like people say, like, oh, where do you get your style from? Like, I've got no idea. I, I, I just try and, I try my best all the time to, to make something that I think looks okay. Yeah. You, know, like, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, and, but I do think that when you do that, that's the stuff that people actually respond to. You know, I mean, that's that's art and music in general, right? You know, you put your heart into it, people will feel feel that, and, and that's what people respond to. Well, and and, yeah. and 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 I feel genuine, not to like you know go back to the company thing, but I feel lucky that I've somehow been able to do that within that structure as well. You know, that that, that seems very lucky to me, and and and, uh, and I'd say that what what Frank has always done is is you've always been you. You know, like you can't deny that you've always, always been undeniably you and that's I think that's the really special thank you <laughs> golly Josh just, just said something really cool about me <laughs> um, you know I, I think that when when people talk about style um, it's it, one, one, thing that, one thing that us artists like to do is we like to sound smart we really like to sound smart. Um, and so when people talk about their style, they'll often talk about how they develop their style and so on. And, uh, <clears throat> and you get down to brass tacks. People don't really, 
the only way to, to develop a style, my belief is that it's by solving a long string of problems and, and an endless string of problems. But as you solve it, you, you often are coming up with particular solutions that are yours and yours alone. Because there are a zillion problems that nobody can solve for you. And because it's your individual mind that solved, that came up with those solutions, your stuff looks different than other people's. Yeah. And then, and, and hence you have a style. Whereas someone whose approach is completely borrowed from other people's, they'll say, Mac, I don't have a style. Because it's all borrowed. It, it's, it's, it's all been around, the, been around the block a few times before anybody saw it before. Um, and so it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there, there's, there, you know, there's that, that's my definition. I remember that, that you know, that, that one of, one of my, uh, you know, one of my heroes in the medium said that, uh, that artist's style was nothing but an accumulation of his mistakes. <laughs> so, you know, again, that's another debate you could all have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank, I would love to know what your kid's book is going to be about. And, and, and also, sure do, you have, do you have kids' books that you are into? What would, what would this crowd be surprised that you're into? Pokemon, like Dragon Ball, Airbender? Because your, 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 sweater your sweater is amazing. Like, I don't know what character that is, but I'm like, Frank's into some weird shit. She's here. I'm looking forward to meeting this artist. Uh huh. Um, the, I don't even know her name. Or what, what's it say on this? Who is this? Warble. Oh, there it is. Rubyama. Ah. Okay. What's, what what's the artist's name? What's oh, the artist's artist name? name. <laughs> I met them today. She's here? He's, he's here. They're both here. They're here? Yeah. Tell them to try out for artists for Frank's uh, kids book that he's working on right now on stage. Are they right here in this room? Yeah, over there. Would they please stand up? No, they're in. Yeah, someone go and get them. There someone go. go get the artist that. He's going. He's literally right over there. there. <laughs> here we go. How much time do we have left? Have we got time for someone to run over the room and pull someone from their table and get them devise a children's book live on stage? Like, is that what we're doing now? Yeah, so, Frank, you want to write the show, the, the, the TV show live on stage? Yeah, yeah. go back to Daredevil? Daredevil. Yes! Daredevil. Judging well, from uh, Frank's body language, I think he's more into warble. <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. Uh, I I can't see it happening anytime soon. No, no. It's it's. it's uh, I had a good long run. In fact, three long runs on on, on that character, and, and and really, you know, it's a lot of fond memories. But but it but it's uh. <laughs> do, do you kind of feel like you said all you needed to say, or like? Um, so I find one of the things about these 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 characters, you know, the what the one the, the longevity that your Batman, the Daredevils, they, they they change and warp and and, and can mani you know be manipulated, you know, with each kind of new generation coming through. And do you find like, are you thinking like you you've you've done Daredevil, or or or, or would you see him in like a, you know, like a maybe a different string to his bow now? Something like that. Well, I, I think that 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 was then. That was then. You know that yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. I'm much more in the business of making stuff up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that you know that's what I want to do. I'd rather be contributing to the future of comics than, than the past. Yeah, well said. What is what is the future of comics, Frank? Like for for the kids out there, for the young aspiring artists and writers out there. It's a David Cho comic. Come on. Oh, what is Come on. that? Dick, what's, like, wait a minute. I'm going to tell them what to do? No, just what is, like, what do you see the future? Like, what was, what would, 
like when kids ask me for advice on anything, I just like the world's changing so fast. I have no idea what to tell them. I'm like, just do your thing. But what yeah. what does that look like? Like I I was at uh, you know I get all my comics in L.A. and there was an L.A. Times photographer there. I think this is when either Black Panther or Wonder Woman came out taking pictures, and I was like, hey. Can you ask before you start taking pictures? And he's like, oh, I work for LA Times. I go, what are you taking pictures for? He's like, I'm doing a story of just old guys like you are the only people buying comics anymore. So I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so there's, th there doesn't seem to be any, when I shop every Wednesday for comics, there doesn't seem to be anyone under 20 coming in there. There you go. I know. Yes. 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 One kid in a sea of uh, adults. Uh, no, I, I see a few. I, I see, see a few. few. And um, I think the answer is. There, there, there's, there's another one. Oh, yeah, okay, Peter sorry, two kids. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no we, we got to understand. We, we, the, the, the road you're going on down right now Yes. Is, is, is one that I've heard since I first got into cops, which is it's over. I'm not saying it's over. It's always, it's, no, it's always over. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, um, it, it was, it was, uh, comic books were going out of business and nothing could save them. One of the, when I got my first job in, uh, 1976. And, and, uh, and then the, the, you know, the, a couple of things started going right. You know, the, the, the direct market could start, came along and, and distribution we basically they, they chased the mafia out of this distribution and and the the uh, and the, you know, the comic shop saves saved comic books um, and then um, then the, the smaller publishers started popping up and all of a sudden you know like people like us could start owning our work yeah. and, and have a lifetime investment in it. Um, and, and it, it seems like this, this, this crazy little art form has a way of staying alive. I think for a long time, shows like this kept them alive. The same way that, 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 that surely the Star Trek conventions had everything to do with those damn movies happening. Because, because the, the, these people kept showing up in Starfleet uniforms and, you know, eventually Hollywood said, look, there's, there's, you know, there's an audience here. Um, and, and so it's, it's uh, this is, this is a, there is a cultish aspect to comic books. And, and, and uh, you know, we've shied away from that term in many ways because cults are, you know, cults kill people. Cults do bad things. But, but uh, no, there is a cultish quality to it, which means, which is like, you know, all I can say is every every religion starts out as a cult. So, so so uh, the fact that, that, that there's still there's so, so much faith in comics and in the you are a cult leader then. I'm I'm proud to be part of this cult. Yeah, I'm I'm, cult I'm, your, I, I'm your Jim so Jones you. tonight. That's why I only go out here in this guy. No, no, I all I mean though is that is that. The same way that there are Star Wars uh, comics who would not let Star Wars ever die, and 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 Trekkies will never let Star Trek die. It was like it'll take a long, long time if they do. Um, you know, comics and the attendant fantasies are going to survive for a good long time. Yeah, even even in the sort of 20, 25 years, I'll be going to cons that if if they feel more vibrant these days than they did even twenty years ago. So I'm so I'm hoping that's a reflection of, of you know more people in, in enjoying this stuff. You know, I, I, I remember one of my, my first editors said to me, and this was kind of I started working around year two thousand, I think, um, and um, yeah, it was a way more kind of male oriented business at the time. You know, we did it. I sort of love seeing families and kids and coming to these things now. It feels more appropriate. But but, but he said that he said um, you know comics. It's almost like opera. You know, it might not always be mainstream, but there will always be an opera house in a city producing amazing stuff. And I I, I kind of like that. You know, like, like the the art form itself is is won't go away because it's very unique. You know. You know why? Because comics are fucking awesome. 
You yeah. Know? And yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter, like, I've seen every single, I don't care if it's good or bad, I've seen every, like, remake of a, you know, rendition of a comic turned into a movie, turned into a TV show, and I've seen Sin City made into a movie, I've seen all of Mark Millar stuff turned into TV shows, I've seen all the, all the, the you know, cosplay, whatever, yeah. comics related stuff. At the end of the day, it's the last, last art form where you can say or do anything, create worlds, there's no yeah. editor, where yeah. it's all, this is your... This is your limitation, and so that's why I keep coming back to it. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Yeah. That would so be a great first to call leader. leader. No idea. What, 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 Let's hear it for our call leader, Frank Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is this? Have we found? Have we found the person? Oh. oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was the artist. <laughs> uh, oh, it's just a credit card. Jeez. Someone who lost the credit card right here on stage. They'll leave the wallet at the bar, whoever lost the credit card. Yeah, that's mine. Tashira Barnes. Is there a Tashira Barnes in the audience? The artists are here. Huh? Oh. He's the eye. Oh, they are here. Right. They are here. Hey, come up here. Come up here. Come up. 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 Before the end of day, we're going to have a children's book. This is brilliant. Come on. So this guy's going to draw Frank's children's book. <laughs> Dave, David chose doing part I'll do two. The water I'll do the watercolors over your art. I'll do the watercolors over Frank's art. I'm pretty good. There, there he is. I have no idea. What's your name? Uh, my name is Arut Pantasirin. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Say hello, everyone. <laughs> It's a pleasure. Yeah, what do you think about Frank Miller wearing your uh, sweater on stage? Um, say it again. What do you think about Frank wearing your sweater on stage? And uh, I'm surprised. I'm shocked, actually. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. I'm, I'm so glad you like my character. And uh, I don't know how who gave it to you or <laughs> <laughs> who, who gave you that top frank who was it was it you did you secretly set this up to see that he was going to come up <laughs> frank has expressed uh moving towards kids children's books so maybe you'll be the artist for his kids book oh thank you <laughs> i'm promoting for this guy just I'm trying to help you out, buddy. I'm trying to be your agent right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Selling 20%. We, we just got the, the, the notice that that's time on this uh, slightly shambolic panel, but thanks everyone for, for bearing with us. Uh, thanks for coming out. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Sorry about that, I'll have fun.